I think um, technological sovereignty can be seen as one part of a response to um, the, the sort of concerns that processes of datification are being driven very much on the one hand by marketization and accelerating marketization, on the other hand, um, state bureaucratization um, uh, and the management, uh, monitoring and um, measurement of, of people's lives and of kind of social sort of activity more broadly. I think um, the framing of data sovereignty can be used as a way of stimulating um, processes of reimagining uh, our relationship to data and data technologies um, rather than thinking mainly in terms of kind of resisting uh, corporate uh, or, or state surveillance on the one hand or uh, liberating the byproducts of um, uh, information systems on, on the other. I think state serenity forces uh, a, a different kind of frame about the relationship between people and their technologies which might not necessarily be formatted in terms of the, the user, uh, the target, um, the, the armchair auditor or the, uh, or the entrepreneur, which are kind of the dominant frames I think at the moment. And so So I think on the one hand, it's of course very important to look at the political economic dimensions of the ownership, the management and control of data infrastructures. So who runs them, um, how that's paid for, and um, the longer term uh, social and political consequences of this. That's of course very important. Um, but I think it's also uh, uh, vital that we don't overlook the role that data plays, the role that data infrastructures play in the shaping of political economic activity. And just to give one example here, uh, um, one of the things that a lot of activists and sort of journalists and researchers are doing at the moment is looking at the role that a global information system plays in the regulation, the management and the reform of um, economic activity, in particular the taxation of uh, multinational companies, including some of the big five tech companies um, which uh, are heavily involved in processes of datification in, in many aspects of our lives. So this is not just um, arguably um, understanding how the profits of these companies is distributed, but this is a fundamental uh, constraint on the way in which they operate. And this is, of course, a huge part of um, um, the sort of broader picture and the sort of broader economic picture around the process of datification. So I think one of the things that uh, cities can do, which is tremendously important uh, in relation to processes of datification, is being attentive to the fact that data is not um, just a straightforward, natural representation of, of, of phenomena in the world. Um, there's a lot of uh, social and political work that goes into accounting for different aspects of, of issues, which is uh, very important to scrutinise and look at very carefully. And in particular to see whether those forms of measurement and monitoring and uh, ev evaluating uh, different aspects of issues are attuned to the interests of the city and are attuned to a vision of the city which puts the people first rather than um, uh, sort of the interests of, for example, transnational corporations or other sort of economic actors. Um, similarly, I think in relation to um, smart cities and sort of the internet of things, I think challenging the idea that this is a kind of... Uh, natural process of technological development, uh, natural process of uh, technological advancement and uh, looking at on the one hand the political economics of some of these issues and how, how, how a process of datification are funded, uh, how they're managed uh, and who'd, whose interests that sort of they're being conducted and also creating spaces around processes of datification to involve different groups in um, not just the use of data but also the making of data to ensure that it can be attuned to their interests.